Adams, this is Jerome Braggs of JeromeBraggs.com, and I wanted to come and do a video today um, to kind of give you five questions you can ask yourself if you've received a scary or terminal diagnosis. You know, when I was going through my um, health challenge and I had received a diagnosis, I knew that uh, I had a spiritual experience that really awakened me to the fact that this disease and diseases period, no matter what they are, do not come to kill us. They manifest to save us. They are manifesting to save us from a life that is killing us. Our way of being, our state of being, our lifestyle that we're living is starving the energy of our soul instead of nourishing it. And it's robbing us of the mission for which our soul incarnated here somehow. And I've done a few videos on my channel that talked about how you can figure out particularly what that is, right? How it is starving you. But I wanted to do this video to give you some questions to help you really begin to see what is being called to you or invited for you um, for your healing journey, like what your healing journey is asking from you. Because the reason, the main reason we manifest disease is because we are, our bodies are starved of the energy of our soul. They have been starved of it for a long time and, no, and nothing that is malnourished um, is, and starving can be well. And it's the same for our body. Our body was literally made to run off the fuel of our soul. And so when we live lives that, um, we're not being true to ourselves. We're not really blissful. Um, our lives that don't feel like our own personal heaven, but somehow our own personal hell, that begins, the body will begin to break down because the body is being um, starved of the frequency of the soul. The soul is a very high frequency energy. It's an energy of joy. It's an energy of freedom and worthiness. It's an energy of ease and empowerment. And so when we have not, when we've been living lives that have been starving us of those feelings for a while, and again, this is usually chronically, it doesn't just happen overnight. This is some, this is our way of being. This is a chronic pattern that we've been having for a while, maybe uh, usually for a few years or at least several months. Um, we'll begin to manifest some type of some illness. So when you go to the doctor and you have received some type of scary diagnosis, especially if it's terminal, I want to offer you these five questions to ask yourself so that you can begin to understand a bit about why you why this disease has shown up. But more importantly, more important than why, what it is asking of you in order to do so that you can live a life of nourishing your soul instead of malnourishing it, because that's really our big purpose here. We're here to live a life that deeply nourishes our unique soul, that deeply feeds it so that it can grow and it can expand and we can become even more radiant in this life and even more blissful and even more free and even more at ease and even more worthy. We are supposed to expand in these feeling, feelings instead of diminish. So these five questions, um, if you've received, if you, if you receive these or you know someone who has received these, these are very powerful questions, very simple but very powerful if you'll take some time to really sit with them and answer them. And the first question is, where have I not been truly myself? Where am I not being my true self, right? Um, for me, when I looked at my life, there was a lot of, of my life where there were parts of me that were suppressed, right? I was hiding parts of me. I was hiding my sexuality. I was hiding my spiritual gifts um, for fear of being rejected or being abandoned or being ridiculed or shamed. A lot of times why we're not being ourselves is because we fear we'll lose love or we'll receive um, ridicule or harm. But where am I not really being my true self? This is an important question because, again, the life that will heal you is a life where you are being your true self in, where there's nothing suppressed, there's nothing hidden. There's nothing rejected and there's nothing denied about you. You are allowing the truth of your being uh, to fully express itself. So where am I not being my true self? Maybe it's in real relationships. Maybe it's in your work. Maybe it's in 
um, to your schooling or around your parents or um, around your lover or whatever. But where, look and see where you are not being your true self and why. Why are you not being your true self? Um, and the next question is, where do I not feel truly nourished in my life? Where do I not feel truly nourished, right? So when I was looking at my situation, um, I wasn't close to my friends. I was, I had, I was had close friends, but I didn't live close to them, and I was feeling very lonely, and I felt malnourished in, in my sense of connection. I had been disconnected from the things that I really love to do, like writing and singing. Um, I wasn't teaching either. And these are things that, you know, were my passions. I was those things. I wasn't involved in those things. I was working a nine to five job, which also felt very malnourishing for me because I knew that wasn't, I've, I've always known since I was a kid, I was in a nine to five type of guy. I was, I, I always knew that, that I wanted to work for myself and have more freedom in my work schedule. But I was working a nine to five job Monday through Friday and I was starting to feel trapped. Um, and so I didn't feel nourished there. But look at your life, right? Just like that. You want to look at all the areas where you're not feeling fed. Maybe it's in your relationships you're not feeling fed. Maybe your work is not feeding you. Maybe you're not expressing your creativity or your talents or skills. Um, whatever it is, you're to be nourished. Your soul is to be fed. And this is very important for health. Like the more your soul is fed, the healthier your body is going to be. So where do you not feel truly nourished in your life? And the next question is, if you were to receive a clean bill of health tomorrow, like if I could wave a wand over you right now and you woke up tomorrow morning and you received a clean bill of health or your doctor called in the morning and they said, you have a clean bill of health, you are completely healed. What life, what would you really love to do with your life? What would you really love to do now that you're fully healthy, right? What would you do? I know for me, I dreamed of writing. I dreamed of traveling the world. I dreamed of um, having more sex because I wasn't having any sex back then. I dreamed of having more sex. Um, I was. I could see that um, I would move from where I was currently living. I wanted to live somewhere else. Uh, and this is this is this is this is healing information because this isn't a. Um, this information isn't like a dream. This is what your soul is saying. This is the life we're supposed to be living, right? So remember, the disease does not manifest to kill you. It, it manifests to save you. It manifests to save you from this life that you are living that is starving you and help you take the journey into the life that feeds you. This is a very, very powerful question that will help you understand if I was fully healthy, what would I live? And how can I start to do some of that now? Right. So that was part of my healing journey. It was how can I get these things in my life now? How can I? I started writing. I started singing places. I started teaching. Um, I started resting more. That was another thing I really wanted to do. I wanted to live a more leisurely life. And I definitely wasn't living a leisurely life. I was living a life of overwhelm and stress. So I started to really change my schedule and become that that live that life now as much as I could now while I was while I was dealing with my illness live it now there's many 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 studies that have been done with people who have um, received terminal diagnosis when they and they just drop the life that they were living and they start to just go and do what they always wanted to do they really always wanted to travel the world or I always wanted to go my daughter lives across in another country and I always wanted to go live you know, next door to her and see this new country and they went and did it. Or, you know, I always wanted to just sit on the porch with my friends every night and they did this and they found that a lot of times those people completely healed. There's many studies, there's many studies of people that did this. And this was the key to the healing because you, what your soul is here to do is live a life that feels nourishing. It feels like yours. It feels like its own personal heaven instead of its own personal hell. And this question is a very powerful question that will let you into some clarity around what your personal heaven actually looks like so you can begin to ground it into your reality now so that it can help you heal. The next question is what makes me feel most like myself, right? What, what are the, some of the things and activities and behaviors that you, can, that you do that make you feel the most like yourself? 
what are some things that, you know, um, or some people that you surround yourself with that make you feel most like yourself? Like, I know I feel most like myself when I'm going to eat with my friends and having a good time. I feel most like myself when I'm writing, especially writing poetry. I feel most like I myself when I'm singing on a stage. I feel most like myself when I'm teaching. I feel most like myself when I'm very rested and I walk in nature, especially by big bodies of water like the ocean or a large lake. I feel most like myself when I'm really being really silly and I'm allowing myself to have a lot of fun. I feel most like myself then. So thus another key, these are, these are medicines for you. The thing that is going to help you heal the most is when you do things that help you become more like yourself more you because the true you remember is what your body needs the most more than the food that you eat more than the modalities that you're engaged in and the medicines you take those things are supportive and they definitely definitely do those things to support you but the real medicine especially when you have a quote unquote terminal disease is to breathe life back into your body and the life that your body and the life force that your body is asking for is the presence of your soul, is the presence of you feeling most like yourself, is the presence of you living a life that feeds you and makes you feel excited to wake up into and really grateful for when you go to bed at night. That's what it's asking for. So ask yourself, what, you know, what makes me feel most like myself? I'm going to add another bonus question in here, and that is, what am I doing that doesn't make me feel like myself? This is a key question to, for you to see what has been added to the manifestation, what, is, what has helped assist the manifestation of this illness. For me, I know it was, you know, I was doing work that I didn't love. I was um, disconnected from my friends, and I didn't feel like myself. I wasn't eating in a way that I felt like um, really honored me and made me feel like this was how Jerome ate. Um, there were some things that I was disconnected. I wasn't, I'm an athlete and I hadn't been um, athletic at that time. I wasn't really active and I didn't feel like myself then. And so I had just all these different places where I could see where, oh, I had disconnected from my soul. I had disconnected from myself and this is making me sick. So that's, a, that's the bonus question. Last question, which was your true number five, but technically now it's number six. What am I truly yearning to experience? What do I truly want? What is, what is that calling in me that won't leave me alone? It's in my gut. It's in my heart. What is it that keeps calling to me? What is it that keeps coming up in my mind over and over again that I really want to experience? Right? Maybe it's you want to move somewhere. Maybe it's you want to write a book or you want to sing a song or you want to perform. Maybe it's you want to teach. Maybe it's you want to leave this. You want to leave everything behind and move across the country. Maybe you wanted to rekindle a relationship with one of your family members that's been estranged from you. Maybe it was you just wanted to relax. You wanted to take everything off your to do list and you just wanted to chill out on the beach for 30 days or just chill out at home and watch TV for 30 days. Whatever it is, what is that thing that's really been calling you and been yearning for and that you haven't been doing? Not allowing yourself to fulfill your yearnings is not benign. It metastasizes into something in the body. And this is what happens when we do. We're supposed to feel, as souls, we're supposed to fulfill our yearnings. Our yearnings are supposed to be fulfilled because they are our desires coming from our soul. And that fulfillment of that desire helps the soul expand when we don't fulfill that our soul shrinks if you could see your aura or your energy field you'd be able to see every time you don't fulfill something you really want your your aura gets smaller and smaller and smaller and it's like a plant almost like a seed closing in on the bud that plant can't grow and it's going to start to, the dying process and this is a lot of times where disease comes from for us. So work through these questions and use what comes up for you as awareness and aha to help you build your healing journey, to help you build the process, the practice and the lifestyle that will be your medicine instead of your toxin. 
Your disease did not come to kill you. It came to save you. These questions will help you save yourself. Until next time, I love you. Now go love yourself.